the purpose of life, and I've said this many times before, is to remove ignorance completely from your consciousness that you don't know who you are. It is because we're not aware of who we are that we live so foolishly and miserably. In isolation. But we are not isolated. You know, there's a saying that no human is an island. They say no man is an island, but that means no woman too. You know how gender conscious we've been. Male dominance. We don't want that. No human is an island. We are all connected together. We breathe the same air. We from the same earth. We share one world. Humanly, look at you. You're part of this planet. That's why it's so important not to think in terms of individuality, but in terms of collective consciousness. But we cannot really appreciate collective consciousness unless we go deeper inside, because we think we are being nice, but no, no, no. We are still compartmentalized. We are still individualized, and we're thinking that we need to integrate that way. No. Some people go to a tree and hug the tree and, and think this is the way to connect. No. The deeper way to connect is to go to the center of your being, and you'll feel the center of the tree. You'll feel the consciousness in the tree. When I had to take my sacred tree down because it was positioned in the wrong place, I went and hugged the tree and said, I have to move you. But I said to the tree, I'm going to plant a little one, but I want your spirit to go in there. And when I had to make that transition, when I had to take this tree down, it was a sad moment. As some of you will remember. I hugged the tree. I held the tree until I could feel its energy from being inside. And then I went to the little tree. I told it this tree, I, I'm going to take you to the little one. And I went to the little tree. And I held the little tree until I can feel that energy in the little tree. And when I did, I said, yes, this is the moment. And then I went back to the other tree and held it whilst we cut it. And so my little people tree, I would say, has the spirit of the last one. So dear life is to me. When I meet you, every human, when I meet you, I connect with you from your soul. I connect with you in the consciousness field. And that's why when people tell me negative things about anybody, I, do, I can't appreciate it. Because I'm, I connect with your soul and the light. The darkness it doesn't exist. It's only light that exists. When you turn a, a light bulb on in your room, where the darkness goes? It, does it have any reality? No, it doesn't. It just disappears. Same with, with ignorance. When you are, in, when you are ignorant, you, you create all these stories in your mind. But when the light comes, where does the story go? All these karmas you are carrying from all the past lives. Do you think you have to go and, and clean up everyone? No. Just shift the consciousness high and all these karmas are burned. The Bhagavad Gita says that. Shift the consciousness. Come into more divine awareness. Just shift the consciousness, which means... You're lighting up your soul, and the karmas are burned. Where are the karmas? <laughs> Nowhere to be seen. And that's why we say those who live in enlightenment and freedom in this state cannot create karma, because you are creating no kind of bond, no kind of attachment to life, no attachment, no aversion, no rag, no dvesh. Bhagavad Gita says, Samatvam Yuga Uchite. Samatvam, even-mindedness is yoga. That's a goal. But only higher consciousness can give you true even-mindedness. It's not the practice of even-mindedness. It's not pushing away the, the negative. No, no, go away, please go away, go away. I only want light. It's not like that. It's coming to the center of wisdom, where negative disappears. You don't see it. When I meet all of you, no matter what you tell me, it doesn't matter. What matters most 
is how much you are touching the spirit inside. That matters most. I don't ever judge you. I don't ever put you down. I don't need to. I can't. Because you are me. I'm you. When Christ said, <laughs> love thy neighbor as thyself, how many understood that? We didn't. We think you have to go and hug your neighbor and smile with your neighbor and offer your neighbor something. No, that's not loving your neighbor as yourself. When you can respect your neighbor as a spark of a divine fire, when you can see light only in your neighbor, despite the darkness, the cloud in the mind, then you are really appreciating your neighbor as yourself. And then love flows naturally. Compassion, empathy. And you can give. You know, when I was younger, and I get anything, I would save the best for myself. <laughs> when I had to share with brothers and sisters or share with anybody, no, 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 the best one is for me. Oh God, <laughs> I was so selfish. But when I realized the gift of higher awareness, no, I can't. You know what a challenge it was when I when I started to work and earn some money for myself, and then my mom had created a lot of debt, poor thing. And then I wrestled when I started to work. Do I have to pay all this debt? Do I have to clear this? It was a difficult night. When I wake up in the morning, the, with the, yes, I have to clear all of this. I wouldn't be comfortable. I'm responsible. Because I'm the one who can do it. I was just about 19, but I made a decision. I cleared all the debts of my mom, and I felt so lifted, so happy, and I've always maintained that consciousness. Always try to give the ones that are the best to others. Sometimes I'm sitting in a program, and, and I see people hot and, and, and miserable because there's no proper security. I, I could take my fan and put it there. That's how I care about others. That's why I exist. I exist. That's why I come and sit in the hall and speak to you. That's why I chant with you. That's why I speak to you all the time. Because my nature has become unselfish. How did it happen? By a shift in consciousness. By a shift in consciousness. A realization. So we are connected to every other soul. And we are in this journey together. And it is by loving others that we grow in love. It's by serving others that we are granted abundance. It's in giving that we receive. And that's why in every space, if I come into a space, I leave it cleaner than when I, when I meet it. Every washroom that I, ha I have to go to that, that, that I use by people, I leave it a little cleaner than when I met it. There will be room that I have stayed in. Even if a cleaner is going to come into the room, I leave it organized. So the cleaner's job will be easier. And whatever I have extra, I'll leave it there for the cleaner. Always giving. Always giving. All these buildings that we put up here, it's not mine. We've all worked hard. It's, it's everybody's. And I've created an organization, Blue Star, that, that is for everybody. Everybody, everybody, everything I do is for everybody. And that I feel free. That is the consciousness we need to live in. Thinking about ourselves? No. You're going to go deeper in darkness. Open your consciousness to give. And life has so many opportunities. So many opportunities. We have to thrive together. One of the mottos of our country is, together we aspire, together we achieve. Isn't that beautiful? Together we aspire, together we achieve. So, in order to really come into this awareness, this awareness of collective, this awareness of unity in the field, we may need to make a personal journey inside. It may seem selfish, because we may need to pull away when life becomes overwhelming and then go deeper within, where we can 
really experience our unity with the cosmic. And that's why we close our eyes in meditation and go into the inner world. That's why we create temples and sacred spaces that we can go and spend time and go deeper and deeper within. But the goal is that when we come out, we should be more conscious, so we shouldn't be less. <laughs> Sometimes we go to sacred spaces and we don't get anything because we don't really appreciate the, the space for what it can give. And you notice the story of the caterpillar and the butterfly, right? Which is what our 40 day sadhana is like. Caterpillar eats voraciously everything inside. But it, there's a purpose to that. It needs all of this. All of this material that we're reading all the time, the spiritual material, <laughs> and all these practices. And we continue to look for the next lecture and the next book and the next tape and the next teaching and the next guru, and we, we continue to amass all of this. Where are we going to go into a cocoon and digest it? The caterpillar needs the cocoon. It needs to isolate itself. It needs to protect itself. And it needs aloneness. And it goes through metamorphosis. It morphs into something different. It means it changes, changes the shape. Instead of being a crawling creature, it becomes a flying creature. Free. Unbounded from the earth. So we need that period of retreat, isolation. And every day we need it. We need it. Because only then we can really take the material and digest it, assimilate it. You know, I've, I've spoken in 40-day experiences or sadhana about the three steps to wisdom from the Upanishad. Shravan manan niridhyasa. Amazing. Shravan is like the caterpillar. You're gathering information. You're listening. Manan is the processing. <laughs> you need to really process without disturbance. Without being pulled here, there, and everywhere. In Ashtanga Yoga, potentially calls it Pratyahar. Take the life force away from the senses. And come into the inner space. Manana. Manana. Contemplate. Process until you have a good realization. And that's why we have sacred conversations. We can talk about it, get other points of view until we have a clear idea. When we have a clear idea, what do we do? Think that we know? No. He just been Avrita Mastu. We need light in the in the knowledge. But we need needed yasan, the next step. That's where we really bring it into being. That's what our meditation was this morning. To really assimilate the teachings. Don't don't have the teachings half digested and think that you know. No. Be humble. He knew, who knows that he knows not. Who truly knows. And he who thinks he, he knows, or she, is ignorant. Knows not. He who thinks he knows, or she who thinks she knows, knows not. He or she who knows that they know not, truly knows. The never in the little bit of material that you have, and uh, oh, this makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but it's not all. You wouldn't take out a, a bread from the oven half big. How are you going to enjoy that? It's still liquid in there. No, no, let it bake properly. Then you can really have a feast. So, this 40 days is that cocoon. I'm already excited about 40 days of this meditation with you. 
and 40 days of sadhana with you. I'm truly excited. Because in everyone I see so many people shift. Can you? Would you? Will you? So I leave you with this. Have a blessed day, everyone. My soul bows to you. Namaskar.